in the first part of this lesson on parallel lines, the previous video, if you remember, we learned a postulate, the corresponding angles postulate, and then some theorems that let us know that, for instance, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that corresponding angles are congruent, then we know that those two lines are parallel. So what we're going to do too in this lesson is we're going to learn the converses of that postulate and those theorems so that we can prove, we can use them to prove that lines are parallel. So in other words, we don't start out knowing that the lines are parallel. We're going to find the measures of angles such that we can use the converses of the postulates and theorems to show that lines are parallel. So here we go. I'll go ahead and write your essential question for you. We're going to say, how can I use the postulates and theorems to prove that lines are parallel. And as I just told you, we're actually going to use the converses of those postulates and theorems. So let's just get them documented first. First, the corresponding angles converse says, if two lines are cut by a transversal such that corresponding angles are congruent, then we know that those lines are parallel remember the postulate says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal then corresponding angles are congruent so the converse of that remember converse of the conditional statement says if two lines are cut by a transversal such that corresponding angles are congruent then I know the lines are parallel all right how about alternate interior angles we remember that if the lines are parallel and they're cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Therefore, if we don't know that the lines are parallel, but we know that two lines are cut by a transversal such that alternate interior angles are congruent, then we can say those lines are parallel. I hope you made flashcards for these, or you're going to in a little while. All right, how about consecutive interior angles? What did we learn about them in the theorem? Oh, not that they're congruent, but that they're supplementary, right? So the converse says if two lines are cut by a transversal, so that consecutive, or remember we also call them same side interior angles, consecutive interior angles are supplementary, And we know those two lines are parallel. On your flashcards, be sure that you draw these little figures. They'll really help you when you're studying. Okay, and I believe there was one more, right? One more. The exterior, alternate exterior angles. So if two lines are cut by a transversal such that alternate exterior angles are congruent, then we know those lines are parallel. So it's really just the consecutive interior ones that are supplementary, right? All the other pairs are congruent. So let's just come in here and prove that last converse, all right? And the good thing is, since this converse of that theorem came last, we can use the other three converses from the beginning of today's lesson in this proof. So that's going to make this pretty easy for us. Of course, we're going to start out with our given statement. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. That's given. I'm going to go ahead and mark my figure. These two are congruent. All right, now let's look at our picture here and see what else could we say. Oh, angle 2 and angle 3 are congruent, aren't they? Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. Why? Because they're vertical angles, and that's what the vertical angles theorem tells me, is that vertical angles are congruent. So now look at statements 1 and 2 together, and what can we say about angles 1 and 3? Well, they're both congruent to angle 2, therefore, 
they must be congruent to each other by the transitive property of congruence, right? Transitive property of congruence, okay? Well, now that I know angles 1 and 3, 1 and 3, let me mark that. Now that I know that they're congruent, I can say these two lines are parallel, right? I can say that M is parallel to N, and why? Because 1 and 3 are corresponding angles, and the converse of the corresponding angles postulate tells me that if two lines are cut by a transversal such that corresponding angles are congruent, then I know that those lines are parallel. So there's my proof, nice, eloquent little proof of the alternate exterior angles converse. All right, so let's just do some other little problems. Find the value of x that makes p parallel to q. Well, first I gotta realize what kind of angles do I have here? This angle and this, what is their relationship? Oh, they're alternate interior angles, right? And what do I know? If these lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles have to be congruent, right? which would mean their measures are equal. So I'm just going to set these two quantities equal to each other. 6x plus 34 has to equal 9x minus 2. Right? If those lines are parallel, that's a true statement. So let me subtract the 9x from both sides. I get negative 3x. Subtract the 34 from both sides. I get negative 36. So that tells me that x is 12. If you just want to be sure, of course, you can plug that 12 in and check. So let's see, I got 6 times 12 plus 34, 72 plus 34, that's 106. And on the other side, I have 9 times 12 minus 2, which is 108 minus 2, which is also 106. So I know I got the right answer there. Those two angles have the same measure, therefore they're congruent. All right, let's see what we have next. Find the value of x that makes p parallel to q. Well, once again, I need to identify the relationship between these two angles that I have here. What kind are they? They're alternate exterior angles. And I know that if p is parallel to q, those two angles are congruent. So just like I did before, I'm going to set these two quantities equal. Solve for x, so negative 2x equals negative 20, therefore x equals 10. Once again, check your answer if you want to be sure. I'd get 50 down here, I'd get 30 plus 20, 50 up here, so I think I'm good to go. All right, how about in this example? Well, what kind of angles are those? Those are consecutive interior angles. What do I know about consecutive interior angles? If my lines are parallel, they're supplementary, right? So why don't you pause your video right here and work this out and come back and check my solution. Okay, I got x equals 5 when I solved that problem because what I know is that the sum of the measures of these two angles has to be 180. So I set that up. 13x plus 15 plus 20x is 180. Solve it for x, I get 5. And if I plug that 5 in and check it, I'll get that this angle here is 100 degrees. And this will be 65 plus 15, which is 80 degrees. So, yes, indeed, I believe I have the right answer. All right, let's see what we got here. Decide whether AG is parallel to CE. Okay, I'm going to have to go over these because there's a lot going on here. So here's AG, and here is CE. Okay, and let's see what types of angles I have labeled here. Okay, I got this angle, and I got this angle. Let's 
So what I've done here is not only have I highlighted the lines they're asking me about, I've also highlighted my transversal in red, so it helps me to better see what the angle pairs are that I have there. It looks like they've given me alternate interior angles, right? A set of alternate interior angles. So if these two are parallel, then the sum of those two, those angles that I have highlighted right here and right here, those two measures have to be the same, right? So 46 and 67, that's 113 degrees for that one. And over here, I have 67 plus 50, so I've got 117. So no, AG is not parallel to CE because those two angles would be congruent if they were. Okay, now, how about this? Decide if BH is parallel to DF. I'm going to change this here. You can use a different color. Use a different color on your paper because I know you probably can't erase it. So let me highlight BH. Here's BH and DF. Let me highlight the transversal. I'll do it in red again. And so what angles are they giving me here? All right, looks like I have looks like I have this one and this one, right? Alternate interior angles again. Alternate interior angles. So those two alternate interior angles are congruent. 67 equals 67. So yes, BH is parallel to DF. Okay, let's see what we have next. Decide whether BA is parallel to DE. So let me highlight my lines I'm talking about. Let me highlight my transversal. This is the only option I have. This is the only line that's cutting both of these. And let's see, what angle measures do we have here? Oh, we have consecutive interior angles. I'm not trying to suggest these are congruent, so I'll put different markings on them. So if these two lines are parallel, then this angle here and this angle here will be supplementary, right? So does 90 plus 45 plus 45 equal 180 degrees? Sure it does, because that's 90 plus 90. So yes, indeed, that equals 180 degrees. Therefore, BA, BA, they're saying, is a ray. And that's fine. And that's parallel to ray DE. How do I know? Because of the same side or consecutive interior angles converse, right? If I were doing a proof, that would be my reason. Consecutive interior angles converse. And finally, what do we have here? BA. Here's BA this time. And DE right here. Here's my transversal. Colored pencils are really going to help you in this unit. I promise you. Let's see what angles we have. We got this angle and we've got the measure of this angle. So if those two lines are parallel, then those two angles, which are alternate exterior angles, will be congruent, which means 71 plus 34 would have to equal 105. And indeed, it does equal 105. So I know that BA, in this case, is parallel to DE. Alright, write yourself a quick summary and we'll see you next time.